Hi, everybody. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited that you guys are all here. We have people joining us on Facebook, on Zoom, on Instagram. We are streaming on all of the places. I'm going to make sure that you guys are seeing me okay over on Facebook. And then we will kick off and get started. I have so much that I want to share with you. We have a lot of new members into the Facebook group. So welcome to all of the new members. We are so glad that you guys are all here with us and joining us. And it looks like you guys are hearing and seeing me okay. So we're going to go ahead and kick off. And I want to welcome you for all of you that are new. I'm Dr. Laura Ritchie. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and national board certified health and wellness coach specializing in functional nutrition, women's health and insulin resistance, and also an essential oil educator and platinum global team leader with doTERRA International. And I want to thank you guys for being here. Or if you are catching the replay, welcome to the replay. I want you guys to go grab something to drink, a pen and paper to take notes. This is going to be a really action impact, lots of goodies to take home with this to share with you guys. I'm so excited to teach and we are going to kick off. We're going to talk about fertility. This is a topic that I get asked all the time. And so whenever we get asked a question regularly, we know that we need to cover that. Oh, good morning. I'm seeing guys pop on. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. And we're going to hold questions till the end just because there's so much amazing content that I want to get through and I want you guys to have access to. And so if you have a question, write it down and we will do a little Q and a at the end as well. But this is a class that's really important and open to everybody because whether you're trying to have a baby or not preserving your fertility and being as fertile for as long as possible is going to help to optimize your other hormones and your overall health. So this is really important. This is going to be really great content for everybody to have on hand and use. And we're gonna start with talking about birth control and the problem with the pill. And I think it's important also to realize that this is a judgment-free zone, right? We're not gonna judge. There is a time and place for that, but I just think it's very important to be informed. So that way we know what is going on and with the choices that we make and how that's going to affect our body. And yes, birth control, it is highly effective against unintended pregnancy. And there is this impact of the hormonal birth control. So again, it's your right to know that's what I believe and that we should know these risks before starting birth control that you do have this right to know. So hormonal birth control can actually affect future fertility. And I don't know if any of you guys were told this by your doctor, I'd be really curious. I know for me personally, I was not, but it affects the uterine lining and the thinning of the lining, which means that the embryo may not implant. So there may be a situation where a woman's having several miscarriages, not because she can't get pregnant, but because the embryo can't implant on that uterine lining and hormonal birth control can actually thin that to make it a little bit more challenging. So these are things that we're thinking, you know, future further on down the road, if you do want to be a mom things to consider. And it can also work as a band-aid. So, so many times we're told that we're going to be put on hormonal birth control to quote unquote regulate your cycles, but it's more of a band-aid because maybe that person has PCOS and they're put on birth control and it covers up the issue. And PCOS might indicate that there's an underlying heart disease issue or diabetes mellitus or blood sugar imbalance or something. And these symptoms can then be masked by putting somebody on the pill or something like endometriosis. Maybe we didn't know that that person had that and then they were put on the birth control pill and it masked those symptoms for years later on down the road. So there's a really good book that I highly recommend that you guys check out and it's Healing PCOS and it's by Amy Medling and I'll put up all the links in our Facebook group here. But regardless of whether you have PCOS or not, this is a really, really good book that I think everybody should check out because it has meal plans and it talks about overall things to balance your hormones. But she has a section on the birth control pill here and I was going to read you guys a little snippet from this book and she talks about how birth control pills can actually increase insulin resistance and that studies show that with certain types of birth control pills women suffered quote unfavorable changes of insulin sensitivity and quote and this was her experience personally this was mine it's really interesting that I'm having some blood sugar issues now and the researchers actually believe that this may have to do with the ratio of estrogen and progesterone used in various pills and they're concerned 
learned about estrogen and insulin resistance. So it may be something that if you have a risk for diabetes or women with PCOS should not be taking any medications that can worsen insulin resistance. So that's something good to know, right? Very impo important. There are women that after they come off of the pill, post pill hormone amenorrhea, they don't have a period at all. And all of those hormones have been bottomed out and that it actually takes time for the body to start signaling again. It can deplete nutrients like your zinc, your B6, folate, which are all really important. Your B vitamins like B2, B2, we mentioned six, B12, C and E and magnesium and selenium. These are all really important for thyroid function like zinc and selenium, for your adrenals, for energy, for methylation. So something to consider there that the birth control pill can deplete your vitamins and minerals. There was actually a study that I heard about from Dr. Jolene Brighton, and I'm going to post these, these informations for you to the link, but this was really interesting from Dr. Jolene talking about that if you got pregnant within six months of being off hormonal birth control, it actually increases risk of childhood cancer. So her recommendation was actually to get off the pill and give yourself more than six months to get your body ready to have a baby, to let your hormones normalize. Now, again, this is a judgment-free zone. I don't share this to free anybody out, but I just want you to be informed that more research is really needed on the long-term effects of this. And it's really important to also get on a prenatal vitamin. And Lifelong Vitality Pack is actually something that we can't market it as a prenatal vitamin, but I can say a lot of our oilers in our oils family do take that as a prenatal and also postpartum and do really well with it and notice that they have really strong hair and nails, which is a big deal if you're noticing strong hair and nails on a supplement, because these are actually the places in the body that are usually the last to get nutrients, because typically all of those nutrients go over to the organs, to other places. So this is really important when you're noticing Noticing, oh, strong hair and nails that your body's actually absorbing what you're putting in there. And then also another thing to consider with the pill is natural hormones are bound by sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. And this, you're not getting the natural protective benefits from them. And this sex hormone binding globulin can actually remain elevated and really high for years after stopping oral contraception. So we're talking about long-term hormonal effects from this. And my mentor, Dr. Jessica Drummond, she actually has a really great video about this. So I'm going to post this in the comments after the class in our Facebook group so you can check it out. But really the pill is small amounts of synthetic steroids, estrogen and progesterone. And again, these are synthetic and they're added at these consistent levels during the month. So you're getting a fake synthetic steroid hormone that's lasting. And when you have a bleed, when you have a period, when you're on birth control, it's not actually a real period. It's what we would call what Laura Bryden calls a pill bleed. So technically you could just take continuous dosing if you wanted, because it's not a real period. You can skip the with withdrawal bleed entirely. It doesn't really do anything. It makes you feel like you're having a period, but that's not a true period. And Laura Bryden, she's the author of a book that I love called Period Repair Manual. And I think it's another book that all women should read. And she has a quote that says, there is no way to balance hormones on birth control because contraceptive drugs are not hormones. So again, there's a big difference and the body knows the difference based off of a bio individual or a bio individual hormone, you know, a unique hormone there versus a, a synthetic, a steroid. So things to keep into consideration. Other things it can actually increase the risk of pelvic pain and vulvodynia because you're starving the vulva of nourishing hormones and estrogen and testosterone and progesterone when you're on birth control pills. And birth control pills can actually increase the risk of breast cancer. And this risk increases the longer that you are on it which is a little bit concerning. Also increased risk of oxidative stress to the body, blood clots, stroke, and depression. 
affecting our mood. So there's lots of things there going on. Again, this is a judgment-free zone. So we're sharing, we wanna educate you. We want you guys to be able to make informed decisions on your health with that. I know I was put on the pill at a young age to regulate my hormones and my cycle. And yes, it regulated, but I had to do a lot of cleaning up work after I got off the pill, looking at my cycles, looking at nutrition, looking at all of those things too. Now let's talk a little bit about the morning after pill. This is kind of interesting. It doesn't work post ovulation. And I didn't know that till I learned about this information from my mentor, Dr. Jessica Drummond. So again, it could be effective, but it doesn't work until after ovulation. So if you were having a situation, you know, where it was really close or before that might not be effective. The Nuva ring it has the same risks as oral hormonal contraceptives and an added risk of disruption to the vulva, vulva vaginal microbiome. So when you're thinking about that, like BV, bacterial vaginosis and dysbiosis of the vaginal flora, because we basically have this foreign object now with the nuvering inside of us, that can disrupt your vaginal microbiome and the flora there. So something to consider, especially if you're getting a lot of infections, yeast infections, BV, things like that. And then Depo Provera, that may be something, the Depo shot that you may have heard about before, but it has similar risks of oral progesterone pills, plus delayed return to fertility of 10 months or more, and a potential loss of bone mineral density that may not be reversible. And I know when I was working in the clinic as a pelvic floor PT that there was a lot of patients that would come to me and they got the depo shot and they just really felt awful. And then once it's in your system, it takes time to get out of your system. So all good things to be aware of, to talk to your doctor, to work with your qualified healthcare professional when talking about these things. And then there's the IUD. There are different brands of IUDs. There's the hormonal brands, which are things like the Kalina, the Mirena, the Skyla, and then there is one non-hormonal option, which is the Paragard, which is the copper IUD. And, you know, again, before I was kind of taught that the hormones were localized to the uterus, I'm learning more that I do research on this. That's not necessarily the case, that there can be copper kind of metal toxicity issues with using that, that the pathway of the bacterial communication, because there's a string on the IUD from the vaginal microbiome that is now going into the uterus, and then we've got cervical mucus. So again, that can affect the microbiome going on, the vaginal microbiome. They are effective at 99.8% and the copper is 99.2%, but again, it can cause localized inflammation. There can be a laundry list of side effects associated with this, pain, issues with mood, maybe bloating, maybe heavier bleeding, headaches, pelvic pain after trying it, you know, different things. I personally tried an IUD, a uh, Mirena, and I had horrible, horrible pelvic pain, and I actually had to get it removed just a few short days later. And my case is kind of interesting because I had a desmoid tumor and desmoid tumors have estrogen receptors. So I was told no more hormonal birth control ever, ever, ever with that. And then I was kind of looking into the marina and then that didn't work. But now that I'm going back and looking at the research, I'm kind of like, wow, that's, that's really interesting. So it can affect you systemically. Something to keep in mind with that when we're making these decisions with our health, with what's going on with all of these things. And again, I don't want to come to this from a place of fear, but from a place of knowledge and giving you guys options. So then we have barrier methods, right? And these, again, they protect against STDs. But again, you need to kind of think like latex allergy. Some people have a concern with that. There is polyurethane or the lambskin condoms, but those don't protect against STDs. So be aware of that. And remember that you don't want to use an oil-based lubricant. So if you're using condoms, no coconut oil, no essential oils, because 
condoms can break. They can break down that lining of the condom. There is a female condom. These are found to be less effective. They're all polyurethane and they don't really help with STDs. So things to consider. There are some better brands that I found out there like Sustain. You may look into the Sustain brand. They have personal lubricants and condoms and different things. You know, quality matters with all of this and it's going on such a sensitive part of the body. And then there are things like spermicide, but those tend to have a really negative impact to the vaginal microbiome. So again, things to think about, things to consider. Personal lubricants, let's talk about that because that's another question that I get asked a lot. And again, remember to start with less. If you're gonna use an essential oil, beware, it's not, it can break down your condom. So know that going into this, if you're going to use an essential oil, start small, experiment, see what works best for you. But also remember again, that the oil based lubricants are not compatible with latex, which means it's not recommended to use these with traditional condoms. Okay. Do your own research. So coconut oil, essential oils, they don't jive with condoms. Okay, I have a natural sensual lubricant recipe. I'll post this in the Facebook group so that you guys all have this, but you can do two ounces of avocado oil or you could use fractionated coconut oil, but it does absorb more quickly. Three drops of ylang-ylang, three drops of lavender, and then you can use half an ounce of aloe vera gel and use that too. Now, there are some other of my favorite brands of lubricants because again, you'd be surprised the toxins and the chemicals and things that are in lubricants. So good to be aware of, but there's a brand called Yes, a brand called Silk, S-L-Y-K, a brand called Good Clean Love, and then there is the, the Sustain brand that I like too, that is pretty clean. So something to be aware of. Sometimes propylene glycol can actually cause vaginal irritation and itching. So I recommend avoiding it. The brands that I just mentioned don't have that. And Simply Silk, this is another one, but you want to avoid this while you're pregnant because it uses castor oil and jojoba oil, which is compatible with latex. So for those polyurethane, the polysoprene condoms, where other oils would deteriorate it. But again, it's not usually recommended to use castor oil products while pregnant. So things to kind of think about when you're making these decisions and, you know, always trust your gut, err on the side of caution and safety when choosing one of those. Okay, vasectomy. Yes, we're gonna talk about that. So there is a minimally invasive procedure now where no scalpel vasectomy does not even require stitches. It's nearly 100% effective after three months. And there does need to be about 15 to 20 ejaculations to make sure that the semen is sperm free and have it retested. So this is really important, okay? Because some people will go and get a vasectomy and they don't retest everything, right? And then that can cause issues. So retest, you need 15 to 20 ejaculations there, have that retested after three months to make sure that the semen is sperm free. But this is a really great option. It is an in-office procedure, it takes longer to fill out the paperwork to, than to actually do this. And what's interesting is the men, guys are fertile all the time, right? <laughs> for women, we're just fertile for like 24 hours, maybe 48 hours if we had two eggs released, like in the case of twins. So you know, I think this is a really great option, something that is not going to harm our, our hormones and things. I was even kind of talking to my physician about doing, you know, getting your tubes tied, doing a tubal ligation, things like that. But what I didn't realize is they actually cut the fallopian tube, which can decrease circulation and blood flow to your ovaries, which can then affect your hormonal health. So again, these are all good things to think about when we are making decisions related to our health and our hormones and our fertility. So there is all of the information on that contraception contraceptives, things to think about. And then there's also the fertility awareness method. And this is really cool. This is something that I want to empower you guys with. I think it's good to have. There are apps, there are tools, there are resources. So things like the daisy, which I really love. These are tools or just even getting a thermometer 
and starting to track your basal body temperature. So we're gonna dive into this a little bit and talk about how cool and how empowering this as a tool is. So the effectiveness rate is, it varies, but between 99.5% and 91.7%. Tracking your basal body temperatures, you can do this to either increase fertility or you can do this for contraception. So you can do this either one, but what you wanna do is check your core body temperature first thing in the morning within 20 to 30 seconds of waking. So this is before you get up, before you go and pee, before you check your phone, any of that, you need to take your temperature right there. So again, quickly with, within 20 to 30 seconds when you wake up, you want to check your temperature. And this was interesting. Again, I was listening to a really interesting interview with Dr. Jolene Brighton and another expert, Dr. Amada, and they were talking about how research is showing that oral temperatures are actually going to be the most accurate. You're going to see new things come out on the market like wrist watches and rings and different things that can check your temperature, but that the research is showing us that doing the oral temperature is most accurate when tracking this. And this is important because even a slight change in temperature means that something is happening. Something is happening in the body. We want to be catching that half a degree to one degree spike because that can be a signal that the body's released an egg. So it's important, especially when preventing pregnancy with this. Give yourself some time. You know, we talked last month in our Mastering Your Menses class that you want to give yourself like three cycles to really get comfortable with the menstrual cup. Same thing here. It's going to take a couple cycles for you to see your pattern, for you to see when that spike happens. With preventing pregnancy, you don't want to wait for that spike. You want to actually stop intercourse three to five days before the spike happens because sperm can actually survive for three to five days. I've seen I've seen in the literature and the research that I've done three days and five days, so three to five. And you want to be looking. So when you're charting stuff, if you see this sawtooth chart, right, this it's going up and down and up and down and up and down with your temperatures, that's going to mean that there could be an imbalance between your FSH and your estrogen. And the body's kind of fighting to control the temperature, right? It's this dance because FSH, that follicular follicular stimulating hormone, a follicular stimulating hormone, it increases and estrogen then increases to kind of pull that FSH back down. So the follicle stimulating hormone FSH, it's going to do this dance with your estrogen and it hits the egg, that FSH hormone, and it hits the egg and it says, Hey, get ready, get ready, egg, get ready to ovulate. So you should be seeing a relatively stable line maybe a little bit of a rise and then it kind of evens out and then it'll spike down and then it'll kind of go back and that's, that's going to be normal. But again, everybody's a little bit different. So you have to track this for yourself. Estrogen during the first half of your cycle is going to cause the body temperatures to be a little bit lower and estrogen starts to kind of spike on day one of your cycle. And then it's going to, in the second phase of your cycle, when progesterone increases after you ovulate, that's going to make the basal body temperature increase a little bit there. So the interesting thing about this is the quality of the egg follicle is determined by the temperature of the first half of your cycle. So if you're doing that sawtooth chart, that means that your body is kind of struggling to keep a temperature at a low point because we don't want to overcook the egg. And this is really interesting. A body temperature of 96 probably means that you have an underlying thyroid issue, which is important. So these are all good things to kind of think about, to play in. I know for me, when I first started tracking my cycles, this was back actually before I even got really sick with the desmoid tumor, and my body temperatures were low, 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 like 95.4, 96. They were in that very, very low range, like off the charts low. And I went to my doctor, and they kind of ho-hummed it at the time. This was my old doctor, but it did come to find, you know, I got, I got sick with cancer shortly after that, and and also had Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So 
tracking your temperatures and seeing what's going on with your body is really, really important. And this can kind of tell us, you know, is there poor egg quality? Did you even ovulate? What is the quality that's going on there? So all good things to kind of look at. If you had like three days of high temperatures and then it kind of drops off or it dips, it could be a sign that you didn't have a good egg quality. So you can get so much information just from tracking your temperatures, which is really, really interesting. So I encourage you, start tracking your cycle and your temperatures because no lab test can give you this experience with your symptoms, with your body temperature, so you can see what's happening that second phase of your cycle from ovulation to the last day before your new period. That is the luteal or the pro gestational phase of your cycle. And what's really fascinating is it's got a finite lifespan of 12 to 16 days. So ultimately, the day of ovulation is going to determine the length of your cycle. And this is empowering because women who don't chart their cycles, they can be fearful when their periods are late and not realizing that long cycles are due to ovulating later than what they may have. So it's easy to see when you're tracking your cycles and you're monitoring your weight your waking temperatures. And there's lots of things that can delay ovulation, right? Stress, travel, if you get sick, really strenuous exercise, weight changes. So charting is empowering. And I think sometimes people feel like, oh, it's a burden. Oh, it's a pain. But really it takes what a minute to put that in your mouth and, and find out what your temperature is. And it's, it's so empowering. It's giving you so much information. So again, after ovulation, the temperature is going to rise and it's typically going to stay elevated until your next period. And that temp rises within a day or so after ovulation because of that increased progesterone. It's heat producing. That's to house and protect the egg that you release with ovulation. So that rise in temperature signifies that ovulation has already occurred. Okay, when you see that rise, ovulation has already occurred. So let's look at actually my chart together. And we're going to take a look at this and see what is going on together so that you guys can see my, my tracking. I've been tracking my cycle this last round. Let's pull it up here. All right. So hopefully you guys are seeing this chart here. And this is really interesting. So this right here, this is during my period. So again, you want to be looking at the overall pattern that's going on, not analyzing every little dot there. Okay, so you may notice like sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, but you want to be looking for the pattern there. So here, that light kind of peachy pink color, this was day one of my period here. And, you know, it went up a little bit, but you can see here for the majority, most of these temperatures are low across the board. And then we have this dip right here. So this is uh, December 1st. That was my dip. So that is ovulation because the days after that, you can see that that temperature starts to rise. It starts to go up. So this is really interesting. It's very helpful now. And typically the temperature is going to stay a little bit higher during that time. And but you'll notice here it dropped off a little bit, but overall the average right now is high. So again, this is where it's really helpful. Now this temperature thermometer that I used, it's easy at home. I got it on Amazon and I'll post the links to all of these things, but this is where it's empowering and I think really helpful to have these tools because this is kind of guessing that ovulation is over here on December 4th. No, it's actually here on December 1st. So good for you to track your own cycles and your own temperatures and know what's happening there. But we know that that second phase of our period between 12 to 16 days, you're going to start your cycle. So you can count here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I will probably start my cycle between now and Monday. So very, very helpful information because remember your ovulation can be delayed because of stress. So that first phase of your period is relative. The second phase is right, gonna stick right around those 12 to 14 days there. So this is really interesting information that you can track, you can see. 
You can also track your cervical fluid or cervical mucus here. But again, please remember that that egg white discharge doesn't necessarily mean that you ovulated. The only way to really tell that is to be tracking your cycles, tracking your temperatures, and knowing what's going on with that. And again, if you're getting a whole lot of C, like sawtooth up and down, which I have here a little bit, and again, it's, it's tracking for three to four cycles to really see what your pattern is. So I wouldn't use this form as main form of contraception until you really got your patterns down and maybe even using other forms of like condoms, something else to kind of help you. This is really, really important to have on hand. Now, something that I like, tracking is helpful, but... There's a really neat tool, and this is called the DAISY. And I wanted to highlight this because this is intuitive. It's an intuitive tool. So I kind of like using both, but I'm really excited after a couple cycles to see how DAISY does. There's some good research on this. It was recommended to me specifically by Dr. Jessica Drummond, also by my functional medicine doctor, which is really interesting. And it tells you. So it kind of takes the guesswork out. If you don't want to have to, you know, chart as much or kind of look at those things, the DAISY is your girl. So it it has a little light indicator here and red light will actually mean that if you're planning to have a baby go for it because this is the day of ovulation or if you're using this as contraception don't have sex during that time the green light that shows up in the middle, that means that you're infertile, that it will not lead to pregnancy. And then the yellow light means that, you know, it's cycle fluctuations. So it does, it means it's learning more information. It's gathering more information. But what's really cool about Daisy is it analyzes your information. If you forget to take your temperature, it takes that into consideration. It, it's got your back essentially, and it's really easy. And then you just let it know when you're on your period and it charts everything out and lets you know your days. Like, are you yellow? Are you red? Are you green? And it's very intuitive. So I really like this as a tool, especially if you're kind of like, okay, I don't want to mess with all of this too much, but I do think it's good. It's good to, to read about this and learn more about this for your health, for your overall wellness. But again, look at the patterns patterns of highs and lows. If you see an outlier here or there, that's okay. But you want to look at the whole picture. And again, by taking your temperature, you're going to be able to identify if you're ovulating, would it be safe to have intercourse without the risk of unplanned pregnancy? When you are no longer fertile, if you desire to avoid pregnancy, when you are still fertile, if you are trying to achieve pregnancy, when you're going to get your period, if there's potential problems in your cycle, all of this is really good information, empowering information that you can get just by tracking your temperatures, which is huge. And there's three primary fertility signs. So the waking temperature, cervical fluid, and cervical position. And we just kind of touched briefly on the waking temperature. I'm not gonna go into all of the others, but I do recommend that you guys check out this book taking charge of your fertility. This is an amazing, amazing book. Honestly, it's interesting when I shared this book, so many of you guys reached out and said, oh my gosh, this book changed my life. I wish it was required reading in high school. Me too. Why are we not taught this? <laughs> Why? It's so important. So get this book get this book, read this book. It goes through whether you're trying to achieve pregnancy, whether you're trying to avoid pregnancy, and it goes through everything. And it goes through and tells you in detail how to check your cervical fluid, how to check cervical position. It even talks about traveling, going through different time zones. What do you do when we fall back or spring forward? All of the things like, guys, this book is your jam. You wanna have this, this is such an empowering tool. And Dr. Jolene Brighton, she did an amazing summit about coming off of hormonal birth control. And she mentioned that the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology mentioned that menstrual cycle, your menstrual cycle is the fifth vital sign. So know what your temperatures are telling you about your 
hormones. This is really, really cool. So fertility, again, it's this outpouring of your vitality and your body has extra energy to reproduce. It's a good sign because if it, if your body is stressed out, your adrenals are stressed out, they're gonna be like, whoop, it's not safe to have a baby. Nope. And it, it affects your sex hormones and all of that stuff. So this is really cool. I hope that you guys are kind of thinking about, you know what, maybe I'm going to track my cycles. Maybe we're going to get the daisy and invest in the daisy and use this regularly. So it's kind of charting and intuitively it keeps it really simple. It has the light. So you just know red, green, yellow, what to do, or getting another thermometer and tracking there and tracking the charts. It's really cool. It's really helpful to kind of have that on hand and, and just good to know, right? Good information to know there. Okay, Heather, so she was asking what's happening when FSH is very high, but no periods are happening. You know, Heather, I would definitely be tracking your cycles, looking at that, and definitely working with a functional medicine doc on that, because there could be a number of things going on. As we mentioned, kind of, you know, thyroid issues, adrenal issues, sex hormone issues, lots of stuff. So work with your qualified healthcare professional, but having a thermometer can be really, really helpful. And yeah, as Sarah was saying, the, the DAISY actually does sync to your phone which is awesome, um, as does this. So these all sync with apps and it makes it really nice and empowering to have these as tools on hand to use. So lots of great stuff there. And then we have some optimizing fertility tips, right? We're gonna talk lifestyle tips and then we're gonna talk essential oils. So one, food, nutrition. You guys know I always talk about nutrition. It's very, very important. So again, eating real whole foods, eating organic as much as possible, avoiding the pesticides, the hormones, the antibiotics. If you're going to eat meat, make sure that it's hormone and antibiotic free. It's grass fed and finished. And I did a whole class on this nourishing from within. You can check it out on YouTube or a class called functional nutrition. So search either one of those in my name and it'll pull up. You want to look at your sleep. Oh, sleep is so, so important. And your cortisol pattern is related to your adrenals, which is related to your fertility. So get your adrenals in check. I did a whole class on this also called Amp Your Adrenals. It's a class. You can find it by searching my name on YouTube. Mito2 Max might be a supplement that you look into to help support your adrenal glands because stress is related to your fertility. Now, Dr. Amada, she shared this, I thought was really cool. Ashwagandha, you can do a tablespoon of ashwagandha in warm water or almond milk at night, and it can help to decrease inflammation and support your thyroid and fertility, and it helps with your cortisol levels. It even helps with increased vaginal lubrication, orgasm, and libido. Yes <laughs> to all of the things. So check that out. Take some ashwagandha. That can be really, really helpful. Drink more water. Okay, here's the thing. Now, I typically say avoid coffee, avoid caffeine. You guys have heard me talk about this before. Now, Dr. Amada had an interesting take on this when I was listening to her interview with Dr. Jolene Brighton, and she was saying that coffee and tea don't count in hydration, so that you really need to drink half of your body weight of pure water a day. If you have a cup of coffee, that equals four additional cups of water on top of that, or one cup of tea equals two additional cups of water. So take that into consideration. Like I'm having some warm tea right now, some decaf herbal tea, and I'm also going to up my water intake with that. So think about that. If you're going to do one cup of coffee, you need to have four additional cups of extra water to offset that because dehydration stresses your adrenal glands. It tells the body that, hey, my environment is not safe. Don't ovulate. Don't make progesterone. And this can lead to PMS and all kinds of things. So being fertile helps with your PMS. And your eggs are actually made in a liquid substance in the ovaries. So ovary hydration. We got to hydrate our ovaries, okay? Lots and lots of water. And look at that, right? Yep. I'm not kidding at all, Carrie. Four additional cups of water with coffee, right? And this is why Dr. Mata, she doesn't pull coffee out. With some of my clients, I'm like, oh, we really need to cut back on the coffee. But she tells them four extra cups of water and people naturally will get off. 
of the coffee and of the caffeine when they're doing this. So hydrate your ovaries, ladies, very important. Supplements, very important as well. Lifelong Vitality is a great one. Again, you can take that before, during, and after pregnancy, making sure that you have enough fish oil, like your XC omegas, flax seeds, eating flax seeds or flax seed oil, your essential fatty acids. Again, that's in that XC omega. And in your diet, right? Eating these foods, supplementing, all of that's really important to help with your fertility. And again, you know, caffeine, it's, it's very depleting to the adrenals. And if you need it, like if you have to have that cup of coffee to get you going, don't drink it. That's a bad sign if your body is addicted to that, okay? It's very inflammatory. It can lead to leaky gut. It actually decreases fertility both in men and women and it can actually increase your PMS. So again, like switch to green tea if you have to have something, because there's gonna be some antioxidants in there. Another tip from Dr. Mata that I learned is to seep and reseep the tea if you're doing green tea throughout the day, because the caffeine content is lower and it gets high, still high in antioxidants. So have that cup of green tea and just reseep that green tea throughout the day can be really helpful. Those are your nutrition tips and you can kind of dig deeper into that. Oh, awesome. Heather gives the tip of Four Sigmatic, help to eliminate coffee. She doesn't even miss it. Yes. Yes, you got a girl. Carrie says she's quitting coffee now. Yes, yes, yes. This is awesome. I love that you guys are, are starting to implement some of this stuff. Okay, let's talk essential oils to support our fertility. Okay, first off, if you want an easy button, one oil, right, to support your fertility, support your body, Clary Calm. Clary Calm. This is your easy button. This keeps it super simple. Apply to your lower abdomen. Just swipe on your lower abdomen around your panty line. Apply to your wrists. Apply to the back of the neck. All great places to apply your essential oils. Do this regularly though. So put it someplace where you're going to see it. Put it by your toothbrush. You know, pull things into your daily habits where you're going to see it. You're going to go, right? We don't have to think or tell ourselves, oh, I got to brush my teeth today. And pretty soon swiping Clary Calm is going to do that. Also the inside of your ankle bones. So the medial malleoli, great place to apply your Clary Calm as well to support you. So use your Clary Calm. That's going to be your easy button. Okay, now some other things that we're gonna dive into. This is information that I learned from Stephanie Fritz. She is known as the essential midwife. Go and follow her on all of the vortexes. She is a wealth of information. She wrote the essential oils for pregnancy, birth, and babies class. Buy that book, all amazing stuff to have on hand. So use your Clary Calm, use it with regularity, continually, right? Diligence, that's where you're going to notice the biggest difference with that. Now, if you need a little bit of ovary support, okay, five drops of frankincense, five drops of myrrh, take that in a veggie capsule by mouth, and you can actually put geranium on your abdomen or Clary Calm, right? All of the, all of the things. So if you want an easy button and Frank is free this month. So stock up on your Frank, use those. If you need a little bit of uterus support, right? Healthy uterus support, you can do two to three drops of your frankincense under the tongue, morning and night. And again, geranium, you can do that over the liver. Liver's on the right side of the body here under the rib cages, over the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys. So lower back area, use your oils. You could also put your Clary Calm there. Use what you got. This is one of the reasons why I have dropper tops from Sheer Oils on my frankincense. Frank is your friend. Frank is going to help to support your hormonal health, your fertility, all of the things. Two to three drops under the tongue, morning and night, done. Super easy. If you don't like the taste of it, put it in a veggie capsule. But these are really big things that are going to help with your health and wellness. And Frank is free this month. So stock up on your Frank. It is a great time to start using that and have that on hand. But I love Stephanie Fritz. So these are protocols, protocols from her that are really helpful. Yep, daily. You're going to do this daily. Very, very helpful stuff here. Okay, there is a fertility blend. And what's interesting is Dr. Marisa Snyder has a fertility blend recipe. And then Stephanie Fritz has her fertility blend recipe. So I kind of combined the two. 
to make like an awesome master fertility blend. Okay. Again, whether you're trying to get pregnant or not, this is going to be something that helps you. If you want an easy button, Clary calm. If you want to, if you like to make your own blends and experiment on stuff, here's your blend. I'll post this in the Facebook group. So not to worry, but you can grab a pen and paper if you want to write it down or I will post it in the Facebook group. So head over to learning with Dr. Laura and you can get it there. But this is going to be 12 drops of Clary Sage. This is a really nice one to help support your uterus. Okay, then we have 10 drops of fennel. And this can really help to support your hormones, to help with your menstrual cycle, all of these things. Okay, 10 drops geranium. Again, very supportive of hormones, very supportive of the uterus. Five drops of lavender. This is also very calming to the uterus as well. Okay, five drops of rose. So you can get that from your rose touch roller. If you are lucky enough to get a bottle of rose, you can do that. And then five drops of neroli. If you don't have rose, don't worry about it. You can use your lavender neroli. If you don't have neroli, you could use your bergamot. Okay, you're gonna put all of that in a 10 ml roller, top with your fractionated coconut oil. And this is a very great blend. You can apply topically again over the lower abdomen for daily hormone support. So put that by your toothbrush, you know, do it morning and night, just apply, reapply consistency with your oils, just like with your nutrition, your hydration, all of these things is going to be key. Okay. Other tips from Stephanie Fritz. Love her. So she was talking about using some essential oils to really help kick those sweet, sweet tooth cravings to the curb because we know sugar is not going to be very helpful for our fertility. So some oils to help with that slim and sassy, you could do a couple drops in your water or in a veggie capsule. Same thing with grapefruit. You could do a couple drops under the tongue, veggie capsule in your water. Again, please only, I'm only speaking to doTERRA oils. If you don't see a supplement fact on your bottle of oil, that is not going to be an oil that's safe for internal use. It's synthetic. It's adulterated. Don't use it. Just talking about doTERRA here with this. And Actually, bergamot, if you guys haven't tried bergamot in your water, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite citrus oils. So try that out or again in a veggie capsule or even cassia. Hopefully you guys snagged your cassia during BOGO week and you can use that as well. This is a really great one to have on hand and use too to help with those sweet cravings. So try it in your, try a drop in your water, right? We just talked about how important drinking water throughout the whole day is or put it in a veggie capsule. Okay. Oils for the guys, right? Because guys need oils too, and that affects our fertility as well. Very important. Oh, Michelle, you're so awesome. She's our awesome scribe. Okay, Michelle just posted the recipe for you guys right there, so thank you so much for that, and I'll post it too, but that was super helpful. And, oh, Brittany just said that she has PCOS and was always told that she'd need fertility meds. Five years ago, she stopped drinking coffee and alcohol and limited tea. She was eating a very paleo type diet and really tuning into her body. Oh no. <laughs> and the comment went away, but I think it, it, she got pregnant. Um, so that's really exciting. Oh, I wanted to read that whole testimonial, but uh, it went away. But yeah, thank you for sharing that, Brittany. That's huge. That is huge and really helpful, right? These things can make a big difference. And this is really going like deeper, right? Healing from the inside out. Really, that takes time. Nutritional changes and healing your body from the inside out. I usually tell people give it at least three months, but it takes time. And what's cool is the whole body heals together. It's really awesome. So it's awesome to have on hand. Oh yeah, Hillary, neroli is awesome. We love, love, love neroli. Sarah says that she never thought to add bergamot to your water. Yes, it is so, so helpful. You'll love it. I love bergamot in my water. Just, it's a really yummy citrus oil. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, let's talk oils for the guys, right? Oils for the dudes, because fertility is just not on us. It's on them too, right? Okay, so for your guys, you can actually use... A couple oils for them. One is basil. This is a nice one, and these can be applied to the bottoms of the feet. You can make a roller with all of these, or you know, do a drop of one, one to two drops, put them on the bottoms of the feet. Clary sage. Yes, you can use this oil for the dudes too. It's okay. <laughs> it's for everybody. And then also, oh, one of my favorite oils, sandalwood. 
Sandalwood smells amazing diffused with anything, by the way. One of my favorite jams is a couple drops of sandalwood and a couple drops of clary sage in the diffuser. I learned this from Elka from Sheer Oils in her diffuser recipe book. So good. Try it. And also have them put it on the bottoms of the feet, your guys. <laughs> Make them a roller. So bottoms of the feet, abdomen, and wrists. Again, this is awesome information from Stephanie Fritz. Go check her out. Go follow her. Go buy her books. They are incredible. Good information to have on hand. And then there are a lot of essential oils that can help to promote fertility. Okay, and we talked about some of those. Clary sage, cypress. Cypress is really good at supporting circulation and emotionally going with the flow. So that's a nice one. Fennel that we've mentioned, frankincense that we've mentioned, which you can get for free this month. Geranium, melissa, thyme, roman chamomile, clary calm. That's your easy button. If you want one oil, just remember that from this class. Use your clary calm. And ylang ylang. Hillary and I have a joke about that. Bang, bang. Ylang ylang. That's known as... It was so funny. I was asking my husband, what is your languling good for? And he was like, oh, that's the sexy oil, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, yes. Yes, it is, honey. And he was like, I listen. He was like, see, I listen. So that's your languling, right? Use your languling. Diffuse that to have a fun time for your fertility. There we go. Okay. There's your tips on essential oils. Oh, essential oils to help with progesterone to help support healthy levels of progesterone in the body. Balance, frankincense, again, love Frankie boy. Take internally, take topically, geranium, ginger, lavender, marjoram, oregano, thyme, and ylang ylang. So play with this. I love to get intuitive with the oils. I love to try different things. I love to try different blends. I love to try internally versus topically, diffusing, see how that makes you feel. So play with this, play with these things and, and I'll post you in the group so that you guys have that written down. Okay. Recommended books. Cause we talked about a lot of stuff and I'll post this in the Facebook group as well. Ditch the pill by Dr. Jolene Brighton. This is coming out January 29. 2019. Go follow, follow Dr. Jolene Brighton. She's an awesome resource. I learned several things, little tidbits that I put into this class from that, that you're going to want to check out. She's amazing. Go pre-order the book. Dr. Amada, she actually has a website. It's holisticfertilitycenter.com and she has a quiz. How fertile am I? So I'll post the link. You can go take the quiz. It's fascinating. The Period Repair Manual by Laura Bryden. Awesome, amazing book. You're going to want to check that, check that out. Taking Charge of Your Fertility by this book. You need this book. Such a good book. Such an empowering book. Healing PCOS. Again, whether you have PCOS or not, you need this book in your life. And it actually goes through everything. It goes through recipes, meal plans, how to clean out your pantry, like all of the things, all of the things. So this is just a really great book for health and wellness. And then my mentor, Dr. Jessica Drummond, she actually has a contraception class that's coming up. And a lot of the little tidbits that we just briefly covered, I learned from this class. I was honored. I'm a student of hers. That's actually where I did my one-year certification on women's health and functional nutrition coaching. So I was able to watch the class and take little tidbits. But if you want to go deeper into all of this, all of the research. It's an amazing, amazing course. It's coming soon. As soon as she shares the link with me, when it's up for the public, I will share with you. And thank you to the sweet, sweet people at Daisy. And I will post a link where you can actually get $20 off of the Daisy Fertility Tracker. So if you want to start tracking your cycles, you can do that. This again is very intuitive. Daisy kind of fills in the holes for you, helps to predict stuff, is very smart fertility tracker. And then also I'll also post the link to this thermometer and the app that goes with it. If you're new to doTERRA and looking for ways to support your overall health and hormones and fertility, I would love to support you, help you get started with essential oils. Stay tuned. There's going to be a special flash sale that is going to be coming your way. So stay tuned for that surprise coming soon. And you can get, as we mentioned, frankincense for free. So if you wanted to start using some of these essential oils, like citrus oils in your water, like boosting your health and your wellness, this would be a great time to do that. We have a giveaway. Stay tuned. Oh, I'm just about to announce it. And again, I would love to help and support you. We have a, a private Facebook team just for our oil squad and our oils family where we do continued education and support. We schedule you for a wellness consult to go over your specific health and wellness needs and how the essential oils can support you. And we teach you how to make roller blends, how to dilute your oils, how to use your diffuser. And you have access to our 
entire virtual library of classes. So if you don't have an oils person already, reach out to me. I'd love to be that person to help you get started. It's kind of a big deal when you choose somebody to get started with. You're kind of married to them, and it can be challenging to switch once you get started with somebody. So make sure that they're going to be somebody that has your back, that's going to be providing you with resources, tools to empower you. Please, if you haven't done so already, go and like my Facebook page, Dr. Laura Ritchie. You'll be notified of future classes and events. And if you need a little bit of private health coaching, if you need some more one-on-one -on -one support, my website is lauraritchie.vpweb.com. Hop over there. I have a podcast with my bestie, Hillary LeMay, the Two Curls on Oil podcast. And the replay is up right now where we actually had a amazing guest speaker, Shannon Hugman, and you want to check it out. It's really fascinating. So go over there and check it out. And then da, 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 the giveaway. Okay. So I want you to post your favorite emoji below in the comments and you will be entered for a giveaway and can be very, very helpful. Brittany, yes, it would work with somebody. Yeah. The Daisy will still be really, really helpful. It'll still give you really good information with that. So uh, not to worry. And I think that can actually help you give you some information and troubleshoot as to why that is. So Daisy is a really cool tool. Okay. Post your favorite emoji below in the comments to be entered to win this lovely Jasmine diffuser. This is from Stadler special shout out. And thank you to the amazing Sandy for gifting this to us. And this is really beautiful. It runs for up to 24 hours and it has an interval mode. This is actually the one that stays in our bedroom. I've had it for over two years. These are amazing diffusers guys. They are from Switzerland, I believe, and are really, really cool. Now this giveaway is for somebody in US and Canada only. You gotta head over to the Facebook group, Learning with Dr. Laura, to do this, but post your favorite emoji. We'll choose a winner in one week on December 21st to give everybody a little bit of time to watch the replay and get your Jasmine. She is awesome, you're gonna love her. She goes for 24 hours which is so nice. You don't have to refill your diffusers as often. And if you want to snag your own or bundle it, you can actually get, there's a sale going on just through today. So it's my link. I'll post it here. It's a bit.ly forward slash Dr. Laura diffuser. My coupon code again, thank you, Sandy, for this is Dr. Laura, all in caps. This is just for our tribe. And this is for a site wide sale. So you can get 30% off of all of the products and you can get a free Mia with a Jasmine bundle purchase. You could do your own Jasmine and Mia there or get and get a free Anton. So Anton is a really cool humidifier that you can use essential oils with. I'm asked this all the time. Can I use my essential oils with my humidifier? And no, because it can actually clog it up and break your humidifier. We don't want that in our life, right? So you can use your Anton and he is amazing. You actually get a free Anton with a $150 purchase on Stadler and this deal ends tonight, today, Friday the 14th. So head over there, use my link. Cause you're going to want to click that link in order to get access uh, to those deals. But that is really awesome. So if you're looking for Christmas gifts, stocking up on diffusers, you need a humidifier in your life. Maybe you got a noisy sleeper. Maybe you have dry skin for the winter, whatever that looks like head over that way. The replay for this class is going to be up until December 31st to watch. So make sure that you take some notes, watch it as many times as you want before it comes down from our group. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you start to implement some of the things from this class, please tag me on social media. I love to know how you guys are using and implementing this information. Let's open it up for questions really quick. If any of you guys have questions, if you're over on Zoom, post over in the chat, or if you're over on Facebook, post your questions there. Instagram, I'm going to lose you in just a little bit, but we'll answer a few questions and then we'll close it out. Looks like we have some questions over on Zoom. Ooh, we have a lot of questions on Zoom. Okay. Let's see here. You were discussing fish oil, but what can you use if one is vegetarian or vegan? Oh yeah, doTERRA actually has a vegan fish oil. So you can get a vegan lifelong vitality pack and that actually works really helpful to have on there. Where did you say to put geranium? Geranium, you can actually apply right over the ribs. 
So right side of the body, um, under the ribs, excuse me, over the liver is where you're going to want to put your geranium. That is really helpful. Uh, the whole month, I would do it the whole month to have there. I've tracked your cycle. I have a really short luteal phase. What could be going on? You know, Maria, that's a good question. Could be a number of things. So I think tracking the cycles is really helpful because that gives you some good information. But sometimes we have to dig a little bit deeper with maybe doing some thyroid testing, adrenal testing, checking to see what your cortisol is like, looking into nutrition. There could be a lot of things. So I really recommend getting with a good functional nutrition um, a functional medicine doctor and somebody who's going to dive a little bit deeper because sometimes it's helpful to test your hormones and see what your levels are at and going on right there. And that could be really helpful. So yeah, work with your qualified healthcare professional on that. That can be really helpful. Oh, thanks Hills. Yeah. Thanks ladies. Thanks so much. Okay. Any other last questions that are coming in? I hope this empowered you go track your cycles, post them, tag me in your posts as you guys are doing this. It's so much fun. And right, this is integrative. Right? We have tools, we are empowered, we're tracking our cycles, we're reading and learning more about our cycles. Um, and you guys that were asking specific questions to your cycles to read this book because she kind of goes into more detail. It's a little bit hard to um, kind of troubleshoot stuff. Plus we don't want to give medical advice over social media, right? Um, but it's good to kind of have this on there. Nikki, yay, congratulations that you're trying to get pregnant. Yeah, Nikki. So I don't know if you were here for the whole class. Uh, Clary Calm on the Abdomen is awesome, lifelong vitality, but we also talked about a lot of nutritional things and hydration and cutting the caffeine. And we mentioned a lot of other essential oils and blends that you can try too. And I would definitely be tracking your cycle. So grab a daisy or a fertility tracker and use that as well um, to have on hand to support you too. Okay, you guys, it's always such a pleasure. Thank you guys so much for being here. It's always such a joy to connect with you and, and have this time together. So thank you for being here. Post any, um, if you try anything again, please tag me on social media. I'd love to see, I'd love to learn. And I'll see you guys next month for another health and wellness class. Thanks for joining. Send you guys so much light and love. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.